Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I designed my own solar array. Here you can see it on my garage. I've got 24 total solar panels, three rows of eight panels, and there are 260 watt panels. Uh, here's my electric car down here, and I also happened to have uh, a friend was visiting the day I took this photo. So we were actually charging two electric cars off of the solar panels on my garage. And what I'd like to show you is a neat little tool for solar planning. I have people say, well, that's cool that you did that, that you planned and designed it, but how did you do it? So here's a great place to start. This is the PV Watts calculator. Uh, this is available at pvwatts.nrel.gov. Uh, just type that right into your web browser or do a search for it. And the very first thing you want to do is uh, let it know where you are. Uh, easiest way to do that is just typing in your zip code. I'm going to put in my actual information here so we get some actual results. So I happen to be in southeastern Wisconsin. Put in my zip code, hit go. Uh, the first thing you want to do here is pick a source of weather information. Uh, I happen to be a bit west of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If we look on this map, here's like Michigan, Chicago's down here. And actually, Lake Michigan has a pretty strong effect on the weather in Milwaukee. I'm actually further inland, and not too far from me in Watertown, Wisconsin, there is an airport that there's some weather data there. So I'm going to select that and then go to System Info. Now, this is where you would uh, start putting in information about your uh, theoretical or proposed solar system. Um, I was already in the software here, but otherwise, uh, this DC system size commonly defaults to four. Now I put it down to one because if I have it set for one kilowatt of solar, uh, you can then use that d to uh, determine how much solar you want. Uh, with this here, uh, it will calculate how much solar you make with one kilowatt and then depending on how much roof space you have, uh, what your budget is, other limitations like that, you can adjust that number to the size of the array you would like to have. Now, now by now you should have already looked at your electric bills and know about how much electricity you use uh, on average in a month and through an average year. What I'm going to do here is first of all I typed in the one for my system size. Module type is we're going to stick with standard. Array type there's a couple different types here. We can do uh, trackers, for example, but I don't have that. I have a roof mount. Another really common one is an open rack. That would be like a ground mount system, for example. Uh, in a fixed open rack, uh, there's a lot more air behind it uh, for cooling. Actually makes it more efficient. So that's one downside of a roof mounted system is uh, it gets warmer. There's not as much air coming through the back of it. So there's a lot of little details like that that are taken into account by the PV Watts calculator. So by putting in as accurate of information as we can, uh, we'll get increasingly more accurate predictive results. So I'm going to pick the roof rack. Uh, next here is system losses. No matter what, there's always going to be losses. The default here is 14%. Uh, I would leave that um, if you want to take a look at where that information comes from. There is a loss calculator here. Uh, one thing I found was kind of interesting is that there is a zero put in for snow. Now I happen to live in a snowy area. Um, I don't know exactly how much uh, snow cover will affect this or not, so I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, we've got our system losses. We'll just leave that at zero. Uh, for tilt, that's going to be the tilt of the roof of my garage. Uh, default is 20. That's not what my garage is. My garage is a little less than a 712 pitch roof. That's right about 30 degrees. Uh, if you have any questions about that, just hit the information arrow. It gives you some information about roof pitches, rise over run, and uh, tilt angle in degrees. Azimuth is a word most of us aren't usually using. Uh, basically, it refers to what direction uh, your roof or ground mount is pointing. Uh, zero would be due north, 180 would be due south. Uh, my garage actually points pretty darn close to straight south. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do solar, is I'm on a corner property of two roads, and the main road is pretty much straight north-south. 
I'm going to leave that at 180. Uh, there are some advanced parameters here. Uh, you probably don't want to change those. If you know exactly uh, what inverter you're going to use and you know what its efficiency is, you could change that. I'm not, though I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, my system type is residential, not commercial. Uh, that's kind of more important for uh, tax deductibility, things like that. Cost of electricity in your area. Uh, default is 11%, but on my electric bill, I know it's 13 cents per kilowatt hour, so I'm going to change that. So um, one other thing, I'm not going to use it, but you can also draw your system. That's kind of cool. You can basically go to Google Maps, take a look at your house or your garage or whatever, and kind of draw out a rectangle of um, how much space you have, and it'll do a prediction of how many kilowatts of solar you may be able to fit there. It's not real, real exact, but it'll, it'll get you in the ballpark. But let's go to our PV watts results. Just click the big arrow up here. Now keep in mind, I put this in for one kilowatt of solar. And what it's gonna show us here is um, how sunny it is during the any of the 12 months of the year, how much AC energy um, I can produce and then what the, the value of that is. Now, if we look at this, summer's not bad, but in the winter, boy, there's just, you know, it's not a lot of sunlight. It's, uh, it's pretty dark and cloudy. So in total, on average, I've got about four and a quarter peak sun hours per day. Uh, that's good information to know. It doesn't look like a tremendous amount of, uh, of value of electricity. And again, here's just the specs, the information that we put in down here. Now, I happen to know uh, what size array that I put in, but before we get ahead of ourselves, um, this is a great place to start for um, considering shading. So th this is how much um, sun I get, how much power I can create, the value of that electricity, but that's assuming full sun. Uh, because I did use a solar pathfinder, I know that I do have some shading. And what I can actually do is take these numbers month by month, add in the shading, uh, just do that little, little bit of math, and find out what my real AC energy would be uh, based on um, taking out that shading. Because again, remember, since I did this for one kilowatt of energy, it makes the math easy. I can uh, get those real numbers, including the shading, and then multiply it um, by however big my array is to find out my, my true potential, including covering that shading. But let's just go back here. Uh, I'm just kind of ignoring the shading for a moment. Uh, the solar array that I put up was a 6.24 kilowatt DC faceplate value. And now, keeping everything else the same, if I go back to these results, of course, I'm going to get some much bigger numbers. You know, the amount of sun hasn't changed. That's still the same. I didn't move to someplace sunnier, but I put up a bigger system. So here's my AC energy. What's kind of cool about this is I know that generally I'm using around 600 uh, kilowatt hours of energy per month. That means Look at this, in March all the way through September, um, I could actually produce more power than what I use. Now, in the winter, October, November, December, January, February, I'll use more than that, but because I, I have a grid tie system, I can actually bank my credits with my power company, which is a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Uh, the other really cool thing here is my energy value here now, my total through the year, is pretty close to a thousand dollars. That's great to know because um, after incentives, my system cost me about sixty-five hundred dollars, uh, six thousand five hundred dollars. So about six and a half years, uh, my system will pay for itself just in simple uh, economic return on investment. That thousand dollars per year, uh, it's going to pay for itself in about six and a half years. The other thing that we can do here is we can download results monthly or hourly. Uh, monthly is going to be the most useful. So I've already downloaded that, and that's a comma separated values, which don't make a lot of sense if you're looking at them in a text editor. But if you look at them in a, uh, a spreadsheet program, 
uh, it gives us all that information very detailed and now we can also run math on it so here is where it would be very easy to figure out that shading uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is we, we got some really weird fractions so we can actually take those just select them and in our uh, spreadsheet software here we can just uh, make a couple little changes like for the decimals let's just say zero decimals we'll just round it to the nearest kilowatt hour makes it nice and simple over here value in money uh, we know we're gonna have two decimal spaces and a dollar sign so we can change that to currency and we could go through and you know change all of these two to uh, just kind of nicer rounder numbers make it a little simpler however we want to do that uh, the other thing at this point that we could do is we could take this information and we could create a chart with it so what's kind of neat about that is I could actually add another column in here um, and have um, estimated numbers versus real numbers and every month as my power bill comes in and I, I can take a look at how much energy I produced I can take a look at how much energy I used and I can take a look at uh, what these estimates are and actually create graphs for my predicted and my real world energy so in the future that's what I'll, I'll, I'll be doing I'll actually be graphing this but I do like knowing that it's gonna be about a six and a half year return on investment so that's it for now I just wanted to give you a quick look at a uh, a nice way to get started in solar using that PV watts calculator and watch for a couple more videos where we'll talk about some more tools that are really useful for planning out your own solar array.